Hello my dear YouTuber friends and I hope you're all keeping well. Welcome to this new video which is Back to Basics Part 6. Continuing our Back to Basics series for Flight Simulator. Now I've talked about various aspects in Back to Basics including basic flight, autopilot functions and flying other aircraft. Now I feel it's time to move on to setting up your controller the way you would like it. Let me just grab my camera. In my case, as you can see, I've got my Holtas 1 sat on my knee, connected to my Xbox Series S. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk you through setting up some basic buttons and functions to the way you like them, and some more advanced button mappings and functions for your controllers. I feel now that the time is right for this. So let's not hesitate. Let's get on with the video. Okay, so we're sat in options. You can either do that in flight. Or from the main menu, just go to options. I'm sure you all know how to do that. I've got my Halt S4 plugged in. By the way, I'm going to show you setting up buttons and assignments on the Halt S1. Rather, not the Halt S4, Halt S1. If you have something like the Velocity 1, Logitech Flight Yoke System, Halt S4, Halt S X, Honeycomb... All these principles I'm going to show you and all these assignments, you can do that on whatever controller you own. I'm showing you on the Holt S1 as an example. If you've got a different flight controller, the same principles will apply and that will make sense as we go through it. So in controls options, so I'm in controls options, I've got the Holt S1 selected. This is the default profile. Now for those of you who don't know, if you go to this box, I'm using my gamepad on my Series S to move around, as you can see, my left analog stick. If you go to search by input here, and press A to enter that, if you press a button on your Holt S1 or your flight controller, so I'm going to press F1, actually F2, I'm going to press F2. Oops, that timed out because I was talking. Let's do that again. F2, as you can see, that gives you whatever assignments are assigned to that F2 button, which is right there, that strike button on your flight stick, which is currently, if you press that, it resets your cockpit view and resets external view as well. And I'm sure you all know this, but to give you an example, if I move around the cockpit there... And I want to reset that view. I press F2. It resets it. Let's go back to control options. And you can do this for all button assignments. So I have a search by input again. And press my X button on my Holt S1. There it goes. To, that's assigned to auto start engine. It's not something I'll use. So I'm going to get rid of that in a moment. Like I said I'll go through this with you step by step. I've not actually done this with the whole test one, step by step, setting things up. So this may interest a lot of people. And one thing I am going to check is the rocker switch, which is on the front of this throttle. I'll show you a picture of that on screen. I don't know why it's gone left stick right there. Possibly because I was moving the left analog stick on my controller. If I move that rocker switch so search by input make sure that's flashing i just clicked my rocker switch left and as you can see it's assigned by default to elevate to trim nose up and trim nose down i don't like that at all it's basically let me just grab my camera to give you a better idea so there we go with that rocker switch, let's just move this yoke system around. 
If you've got your throttles so far up, for example, maybe even coming to land and you're trimming, it's easy to nudge that throttle as you're trimming. I just find I used to like it on the Holtas 4. I just find now with the Holtas 1, I'm not keen on it. What I prefer to use as trimming are the B, what is it, B2 and B1 buttons. B2 is there and B1 is on the front. And an interesting thing about this. So when you're trimming, so trimming basically, when you're trying to get level flight in the air, go and look at video one. I'll link it in the top right for you on my Back to Basics series. I talk about trimming there. So when you're trying to get level flight, you're clicking trim nose up and trim nose down, which is by default assigned to that rocker switch. What I prefer to do, like I said, I prefer B1 and B2. Now, if you want to descend, you would push your joystick forward. So to make sense of trimming, I'm going to say B1, bring the whole tass around again, B1 will be my trim nose down. Because it's already, the joystick is assigned, so if you push it forward you will descend. So it makes sense to me to put that as trim nose down. Depends which way you prefer it. And of course pulling back would be ascending or climbing. So it makes sense to go trim nose up with B2. Let's just stop that recording. So going back to the controls here, I'm going to find... Let's grab the right controller here, <laughs> which is my gamepad. Sometimes with this filter you have to click it to all, and then use your right stick to put it back to assigned, so it shows you all your assigned functions on your controller. And you can expand collapse with this box here. M move your controller over that and press A, it just collapses all the boxes. Trimming will be found in flight control services, so I'm going to select that and press my A button. And control trimming services, again I'm going to select that menu. And I'm going to get rid of that rocker switch assignment for trim nose up and trim nose down. So I'm going, going to, I've showed this before in other videos, but I'll show you again. I'm going to click in this box here, highlight it, press my A button. And I'm going to clear current input to get rid of that assignment. And go down to validate and press your A button again. Because I've altered something here now, I'm going to have to rename this profile. You can't save this to your basic profile. Soon as you alter something, you've got to rename the profile. So I'm going to call this, as we're in back to basics, just basics. Basics. Using my gamepad again. You could do this with the mouse to make it faster. faster but basics. There you go. Yep. So that profile now is called basics because I've altered something in the default profile. I'm going to get rid of that elevator trim nose down assignment. Again, highlight over it, press your A button, clear current input and validate and apply and save. I can actually press my Y button on my controller to do that. So now I've got to restart those trimming assignments. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to find, I put my filter to all, so it's showing me all the possible assignments that I can make. I'm going to find elevator trim nose up and trim nose down, which is there. Again, I told you I want B2 as my elevator trim nose up. So I'm going to click in this box here, press A. Click in this start scanning box, press A. And press B2 on my hold task 1. Now it's saying it's already assigned to brakes. I didn't know that. So I'm going to have to clear that brakes. I want my brakes somewhere else. But I'm going to go to validate there first. And apply and save. Press my Y button. And trim nose down as I said. I want that on B1. So again click in the box. Click in the start scanning box and press B1. And that's now my trim nose down and that B1 is assigned to nothing. So I'm going to press validate there and apply and save.
So that's now applied to my profile. And when I go into the sim later, trim nose up and trim nose down will be applied to B1 and B2. Now I'm just going to go to search by input. And I'm going to click B2 because it said it's assigned to brakes. Instead of B2, I want my trigger button, which is on the front of the joystick. Your, let's just take a look. It's a black trigger button right at the front of your flight stick. I want that as my brakes. So I'm going to click in the box here. Click in this box. And press my trigger button. That's already assigned to a few things as well, not to worry. I'm going to have to clear one of these at least. And go to Validate. And Apply and Save. So now if I click, so B2 now it is only assigned to trim nose up. If I click that X there to clear that button I press, and click in that box again using my gamepad, I'm going to press A. I'm going to press my trigger button. As you can see, it's assigned to brakes. It's also assigned to fly, which is okay. I don't want it assigned to toggle smart cam. So I'm going to highlight this box here. Press my A button on my controller. And I'm going to clear current input to get rid of that assignment. And go to validate. And press Y to apply and save. So my trigger button now is only assigned to brakes. And when I'm in the menu, I can press it to go and fly. Which is perfect. So let's move on. So continuing, I'm going to now start clearing some buttons that I want to assign for other functions. So I'm going to go search by input. I'm going to press my X button again on my Holtas 1. It's engine start. I don't want that. So I'm going to click in this box. Clear current input. And validate. And apply and save. Now X. If I just press that again just to show you. It's assigned to nothing. I'm going to clear. Oh. Let me just clear that box again. I press. There we go. It's a bit fiddly. So let's go search by input again. I'm going to do the same for A on my Holtas 1. That's toggle parking brakes. Actually, I want my Y button. I'll show you a picture of that on screen. I want that. I prefer that as toggle parking brakes. So I'm going to click in this box. I'm going to click in this box here. Which lets me press a button. Y in my case. And that's a sign to toggle spoilers, so I'm going to have to clear that. But that's what I prefer as toggle parking brakes. Validate. By the way, now, A is assigned to nothing. So that's perfect for me. If I go search by input and press my Y button, you can see now that's assigned to toggle parking brakes. It's also assigned to toggle spoilers, but I don't want that as toggle spoilers. So I'm going to click in that box, just as we did before. Clear current input, and validate, and apply and save. Y is now set as my toggle parking brakes only. That's brilliant. That's the way I want it. Continuing, I'm going to go through this with you step by step, because I want you to see how I set up my controllers. I'm going to press my B button now on my Holtas 1. That's assigned to toggle landing gear. That's okay. I can keep it there. I don't mind that. And at the front of the Holtas 1, I'll show you the two buttons, which are, let me just take a look myself, B5 and B... Sorry, B3 and B4. If I... Those are assigned by default to B3 is decrease flaps and B4 is increase flaps. I'll just show you that. You can test this yourself. I like that. Increase and decrease flaps. That's perfect for me on the front of the throttle. So I'm going to leave them alone. The only other ones that I want to clear are my buttons previous and next and B5. So I'm going to see if these are assigned. I'm going to press B5. It's assigned to nothing. That's perfect. 
because I'm going to show you some advanced settings for these. Uh, previous, I'll click that. It's assigned to nothing that's perfect. Ah, stop it. Let's click that box again. And next, click that. It's assigned to display cockpit. I don't want that. I'm going to click in that, just like I did before. Clear current input. That gets rid of that assignment. Validate. And apply and save. If I'm going too fast for you, do feel free to just rewind the video a bit and take this step by step but basically I've cleared all the buttons that I don't want a button that you may not know I'll show you a picture of this on screen the button with those two squares if I go search by input and press that that's toggle cockpit and external view now we can go back to the sim and I'm going to press that button oops I've got my throttle up as you can see, it toggles external and cockpit. That's fine. I'm going to keep that the way it is. So let's continue. Okay, so now we get to the part of the video, which is showing you some advanced assignments. Again, I'm assigning these to the whole task one. I did do a video showing these similar assignments, which I'm about to show you for my velocity one. I'll link it in the top right. Whatever flight controller you're using, you can do the same thing with different buttons on different flight controllers, of course. So what I want to do, let's go back to my flight simulator. I want... Instead of coming down here and using a mouse to... I'll use my left analog stick in this case. To start altering the autopilot, to turn the autopilot on, to turn nav on, to follow our course, to turn vertical speed on, to rise or climb under autopilot. Instead of doing all that, I want to set up my controllers to do that for me. I want to set buttons to do all that stuff for me. I'm going to show you a few assignments. It's up to you. You can go wild with this. Whatever aircraft you're using, you can set up different profiles for different aircrafts with different autopilot assignments. So you can get very deep, as deep as you want it. Now, I've got no autopilot on my assigned. I've got no autopilot functionality set up with this profile currently. So I'm going to have to go down to Filter. Use my right analog stick to go to all. Now all the assignments I can set up suddenly appear. So I'm going to click in the autopilot. Highlight it and press the A button. I'm going to use my right analog stick to scroll down this menu here. And I want toggle autopilot master. What this does is actually just turns your autopilot computer on. Remember, if you've not seen my other videos, it doesn't do much in itself. You're just turning on the autopilot computer. You have to enter further commands for the autopilot to do other stuff. And I'll show you that in a moment. But I'm going to set up a button for this. Toggle Autopilot Master, which is my X button on my whole task one. So I'm going to click in this box. Remember I cleared the assignment for X before, so nothing's assigned to X at the moment. Click and start scanning and click my X button on my whole task one. Go down to validate and apply and save. Let's take it a bit further. I want, when I've turned on the autopilot computer, I want to press my A button just underneath X to engage a nav mode so it follows my autopilot route I've set up on the world map. Now to do this, on this menu, autopilot menu, in filter all, you have to scroll right down, keep scrolling, keep scrolling, until you start to see nav. It's not appearing yet. Has it appeared? Autopilot, maybe it has. I've just gone past it. <laughs> Keep scrolling till you see autopilot nav hold on and hold off. And just beneath that, autopilot nav one hold is essentially... Let's go back to the sim to show you. 
I'll get my cursor up on screen. I've not got a mouse attached to my Series S at the moment. Essentially, that assignment is this. It's, it's the same as clicking nav mode. So let's go back to control options. I'm going to have to do that again. But then again, you can see where it is exactly. So go to filter all, autopilot. Scroll down to see autopilot. Nav hold on, nav hold off. No. Autopilot, nav one hold, on and off. And underneath that, you've got autopilot, nav one hold. That's the button that is essentially like clicking your nav button on your autopilot. So I'm going to click my A button there. Go to start scanning, just like we did before, and press my A button. And then validate. And apply and save. So now, if I collapse all those menus, open collapse, go to assigned, You move your filter to assigned. This is essentially, like I said, everything you've got assigned to your flight controller. As you can see, I'll turn my autopilot computer on by pressing my X button. I'll follow my course by pressing my A button. Let's continue with these advanced assignments. Okay, so continuing with our advanced autopilot mapping on the Hull Test 1 or whatever flight controller you're using, go to filter, make sure it's on all. Showing all the possible assignments we're allowed to set up. Click in the autopilot menu. In my case, I'm using my right analog stick to scroll through this menu. When I start to see autopilot as the first word, I'm in the right area. There we are. Autopilot. It's this one I want to set up. I'm going to show you the bank of buttons. So it's 13, 14 and 15, B5, previous and next. Basically, for my vertical speed, when I click on nav, and I want to set a vertical speed, I could set buttons to do this. And that's with this item here, or this setting here, autopilot vertical, vertical speed hold on. So if I use my A button there, I'm gonna set this to B5. So I'm gonna look, press my A button, start scanning, press B5 and validate. Press my Y button, or I'll go down to apply and save. I'll press Y as a shortcut. If I just scroll up using my right analog stick here, I can actually set my previous and next to increase or decrease that vertical speed reference. I'll show you what this does in a moment. But I'm going to press in decrease. I'm going to go click my A button there. Go to start scanning. I'm going to use my previous button, button 13 on the whole test one, as to decrease vertical speed. Like I said, I'll show you what this does in just a moment. Apply and save. Scroll up a little bit further. You'll see increase, or increase autopilot reference vertical speed. Click my A button there. Go to start scanning. Going to use 14, my next button there, to increase vertical speed. Press validate or choose validate and apply and save. Let's go back to the sim to show you what this does. So if I click B5 or button 15 on the whole test one, you can see, let's just bring up the cursor, you can see a blue box has appeared here. Now let's just get rid of that cursor. If I click my next, that will increase my vertical speed under autopilot control. I'll show you fully what this does later. If I press my previous button, it will decrease. If I want to descend, I can start descending under autopilot control or increase it. Ascending, climbing under autopilot control. So I don't have to press any of these buttons on this left panel here. I've now got it set up to buttons on my Holtas 1. Like I said, it's up to you. Whatever autopilot functions you want set up, 
you can set them up and play with these assignments to your heart's content. I'm just showing you an example. Okay, so with them set up, let's move on. Okay, so for this next part, I'm going to talk about some of the basic things like uh, views and sensitivity. I'm not going to take too long on this because I've done other videos on this. Let's get back to the sim. Now, in the cockpit, I've just left it at as default I prefer that looking moving my hat switch left and right gives me quick views left and right up takes me up over the knolls down brings me down to my instruments and by default if you go left and right you can toggle between all your different instrument views go back up again it takes you back to the cockpit view if I press the button to go external I've set my views up so it spins around freely when I'm in external mode. I'm not going to show you how to do this. I'll link a video. I did a whole video on this. I'll link it in the top right. The only thing you, you, that's different now. That was done when the mappings weren't correct with the whole test one. Now if you go to things like. Let's just show you. I'll just show you this. Just for reference. But if you watch that video. It does talk you through this. And it's quite thorough. If I go to external camera. You can simply choose now. External view look up, move your hat switch up, look right, move your hat switch right. You can actually just do it on the fly now rather than going down to, where was it? Let's just remind myself, select input, you don't need to go there any longer. You can just go here. If I want to go external view look up, I'll do this again. Click my A button, move my hat switch up and validate and apply and save and I did the same for left right up down I won't talk about them again I'll go through them through them again because I've got a whole video on that which I've just linked I will go to sensitivity now for me it's still not saving for a lot of people on the whole task one on your Xbox console it's not saving properly yes you can put it into sleep mode and not turn your Xbox off I don't want to do that. I want to unplug my Xbox at night time. When you do that, your sensitivities don't save. So I'm just going to go through this again. I've done this in previous videos, but it takes me a matter of seconds. So my ailerons, left and right, axis 4. It should be the same for you. I'm going to highlight sensitivity minus. Use my right analog stick to go down to minus 50. Highlight the one beneath it, sensitivity plus. Minus 50. Done. Your pitch access up and down. Sensitivity minus. Use my right analog stick. Minus 50. Sensitivity plus. Minus 50. I have to do this every time I turn on my Xbox and fly flight simulator. It doesn't take long. Twist access. Twist your joystick if you've not done that. <laughs> That's terrible. But twist it for your rudders. So rudders axis, axis 2, it'll be the same on yours by default. I'm going to put these to minus 30. And again in the plus sensitivity, minus 30. And Bob's your uncle. Let's just do that, minus 30. What did that take me? Maybe less than a minute? Go to done and apply and save and that's everything that i want set up on my whole task one it's everything i use when i'm flying something like the cessna 172 okay so with that all set up let's now go for a test flight okay so following tradition setting off from runway 27 at london city airport over to 27 right at Heathrow Airport and I've just added let's see Q Gardens as a waypoint in between them very simple flight obviously Cessna 172 selected let's go fly and here we are runway 27 in our lovely Cessna 172 let's jump into the cockpit and what I'm going to do is set an autopilot altitude. Again, go look at my Back to Basics series. I'll link a video talking about setting autopilot altitude in one of the videos. I'm using the gamepad for this. I don't have a mouse attached to my Series S. It's bad for me, but it's okay. I can use the gamepad. 
I'm just going to increase that autopilot altitude, what I want the autopilot to climb to, to 1,200 feet. Sorry for the noise in the background. My Accu Seasons has started. I think it's the uh, Daily Windows Task Manager. Once that updates Accu Season, it just starts the program as well. Not to worry, it's not going to affect this video. Okay, so with that all set, I'm just back on my whole task one now. I'm going to throttle up, press my Y button to release my parking brake. I'll twist, twist my joystick as my rudder. That's all fine with those sensitivity set in. Once we get to around 60, 70 knots, standard takeoff. There we go, that will do. Pull back gently on my flight stick. And I'm going to start dabbing trim nose up B2. Rem rem remember before I set to trim nose up. Just going to dab that. Bring my throttle back about a tenth or so, so I don't over rev my engines. I'm messing with both trim nose up and trim nose down. Plenty of time. I've got my core set up on my right G1000, as you see there. So I'm going to follow the course as well. Let's trim down a little bit. Bring my throttle back a little bit more. Trim nose down just to get to some level flight. I'm practicing that first with the settings I set up. That will do plenty of time. Let's clear these buildings, the financial district coming up on our left here. Before we go to autopilot, because autopilot will take us directly <laughs> onto those buildings. Which is not good at our current altitude. I'm trimming for level flight here because I want to show you all the autopilot functions I've just set up on my Holtas 1. And I'm taking my time as you can see. Looking on the right of that left G1000 there, you can see my vertical speed is coming back to sort of level flight. Now, now I've cleared pretty much these buildings, I'm going to press my X button. Turns my autopilot on. Press my A button. Remember that follows the course. As you can see I'm hands off now. GPS is selected. I'm going to press my. Let's get down to the screen. My B5. To turn vertical speed on. And I'm going to climb by 500 feet. So I'm pressing my next button. 500 feet per minute. So that will follow our course. I've not had to use a mouse or my gamepad. Follow our course and climb us at our specified rates per climb per minute, which is 500 feet per minute, which it's doing nicely there. And obviously when I get closer to Heathrow, I'll press my X button again to turn autopilot off and start configuring to land at Heathrow Airport. All very straightforward. Let's go to external view. As you can see from what I set up, it all works nicely. London's looking fine from up here, not so good when you get down to sort of 100, 200 feet. Actually, it doesn't look too bad, does it? Very nice. I believe I got some like scattered clouds selected, because the weather over the southeast of England today is not the best. Get back in the cockpit, take a look at my right G1000 using the default buttons. Left and right moves me between my instrument views. How far have we got to go? It's saying, well, to our first waypoint, which is Kew Gardens, seven, over seven nautical miles. So we've still got plenty of times. But the idea of this is you can set your autopilot up, buttons on your Holtas 1, or your flight controller, whatever you be using, 
where you don't need to come down to select any of these autopilot buttons. You've got them all set up on your flight controller. And this is pretty much what I'll use when I'm on the Xbox and sat on my couch. What I would use to fly day in, day out. I still like my Holtas 1. Wish I had a mouse selected. I could zoom in. But I could see kind of Heathrow in the distance there. Just haven't got round to getting a mouse set up when I was recording this this afternoon. But that's okay. Typically, I would advise just getting a standard mouse, wired mouse, or wireless even better. There you go. You can see Heathrow in the distance there. So I'm going to bring my throttle back to start to get to flaps 1 speed. Which, if you rem remember looking on the left of that left G1000, where you can see the speed going down currently... When we're in that white zone, that white taper on the speed ribbon, that's when you can go to flaps 1. I've covered this in other videos, of course. Set up for 27 right, didn't I? Oh, that was a big pause. I'm not sure what that's about. Probably lots of scenery loading in. Lovely. From this height... London looks fantastic to me. Still a bit crumpled. Uh, let's go to external view again. Give you a better picture. Beautiful. Although on the Xbox Series S you do get a fair amount of popping still over these busy cities. As time goes on I'm sure that will be less noticeable. Oh, we're well into flaps 1 speed there. I can go flaps 1. Look outside my left window to see my flaps coming down. Under autopilot control, so I'm not worried about any flare. Just control my speed there. I don't want to speed slow down anymore. And you can see quite clearly now Heathrow straight ahead of us. Let's get over the nose. Yep, so I'm going to land on that room where you can see ahead of us there, hopefully. There should be no issues. Still under autopilot control. Of course, we've climbed to our 1,200 feet altitude. And following our course still. I'm so used to having a mouse in front of me, it's... Uh, never mind. Got to show you, even on the most basic setup, you can get this up and running just fine. Yep, yeah, I'm just going to sit back, which is why I love playing my Xbox console. Sit back on my couch, relax, stretch my legs out a little bit because I've got the Holtas 1 on them. That's the only thing I don't like. The Holtas 1, it's not heavy, heavy. After a while, it can make your legs feel a bit dead. <laughs> I think one of my viewers suggested some kind of IKEA table. He's got his Velocity one set up on that, which is a great idea. Sat on the couch, brings the table towards him, and away he goes. Maybe I'll invest in something like that myself. How are we doing? Yeah, there's no issues here, is there? No issues. What I might do, actually, under autopilot control, is bring my altitude down. Can I do this? Can I go vertical speed down? Nose down. Wants to stay at a uh, assigned altitude, though. Yeah, I'd have to alter. And I don't want to do that because I've not got a mouse to touch. Using the gamepad whilst flying is not a good idea because it can start to affect your yoke. And get you in all kinds of trouble. So that's where a mouse is recommended. Doesn't matter. Still at a good altitude here. In fact, I don't need to alter the altitude. I could do it, but I don't need to alter it. Because as you can see, we're pretty much on a great approach to runway 27 right. I'll complete this just to complete for the sake of completeness.
the trouble with the Cessna 172 or 152 once you slow down to flap speed it can take it can take a minute or two <laughs> to get to your airport but that's okay it's part of the enjoyment and the views around here I've always enjoyed the views around Heathrow they do look pretty special look at that lovely And I'm just now deciding, let's go to Flaps 2. Or Stage 2 Flaps. Speed will slow down to where I want it, which is fine. Of course, when you deploy Flaps, for those of you who don't know, you're creating more momentum. You're stopping the wind rushing under your... You're stopping lift, basically, and you're slowing the aircraft down. So you're creating a wind barrier, which if in effect acts like some kind of speed break. In effect. That's not a completely accurate description of flaps, but you get the idea. Basically just acts as a wind barrier, stops the wind from getting underneath your wings as much, and slows you down. That's all you need to know about flaps, really. Or the effect of them. Let's decrease the throttle here. I'm sure someone like Aces, if you're watching this, you can give a more accurate description there. Right, so I'll, I press my X button, autopilot's disengaged. So I'm flying this manually, I'm decreasing the throttle to, to descend because I'm quite high at the moment. And I'm just going to control that descent with the throttle. So pretty much what we did in the previous videos in this series. There we go, I don't want it to descend too much more there, I'm getting to too white and too red on the puppy. Happy lights. Bit low now. Not too bad though. I don't want to increase altitude too much because you would suddenly start to get a lot of whites coming up, which we don't want. That's fine. I can see the runway ahead of me. I'm not concerned now. Well, I've seen the runway ahead of me for some time, in fact. <laughs> That's fine, let's get over the runway, then I can decrease the throttle. So I'm coming over the runway around about now. Decrease my throttle and then just use my Haltas 1 flight stick to float over the runway. Nice and gentle. There you go. That will do. Brake, brake, brake. Raise my flaps. There we go. Stick on the parking brake. Get outside. So there you go. That's setting up some more advanced custom profiles for you, for your flight controller. Like I said, it's worth repeating. I did this on the Holtas one. You can do it. The same principles will apply to any flight controller. Let me know your thoughts. Give the video a like if you've enjoyed it. Subscribe for more, of course, many more Flight Simulator videos on their way. And I'll see you soon.